Mahatma Gandhi, the father of nonviolence. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, known worldwide as Mahatma Gandhi, was born on October 2, 1869, in the town of Porbandar, India. Raised in a modest family, Gandhi was taught values of honesty, integrity, and respect for all living beings from a young age. Although he was a shy child, Gandhi was deeply curious and showed a strong sense of justice. When he was 18, Gandhi traveled to England to study law. In England, he was introduced to the Western ideas of freedom, human rights, and equality, which would shape his future beliefs. After completing his studies, Gandhi returned to India as a lawyer, hoping to help his fellow countrymen. However, in 1893, he was offered a job in South Africa, which was then under British colonial rule. This journey turned out to be a life-changing experience for Gandhi. South Africa, like India, had a system of racial segregation, and Gandhi experienced severe discrimination because of his skin color. In one famous incident, he was thrown off a train because he refused to give up his seat to a white passenger. This experience left a deep impact on him and sparked his determination to fight against injustice. The Birth of Nonviolent Resistance In South Africa, Gandhi began organizing protests against racial discrimination. He developed a philosophy called Satyagraha, which means truth force or soul force. Satyagraha was based on the idea that one should fight injustice not with violence but with peaceful resistance. Gandhi believed that through nonviolence, one could convert the oppressor and show them the truth. His ideas were influenced by religious texts, especially Hindu, Christian, and Jain teachings that emphasized compassion and non-harm. Under Gandhi's leadership, the Indian community in South Africa resisted oppressive laws through peaceful protests, boycotts, and other forms of civil disobedience. This movement gained worldwide attention and established Gandhi as a champion of nonviolent resistance. After spending over 20 years in South Africa, Gandhi returned to India in 1915, where he would soon become the leader of a much larger struggle. India's fight for independence from British rule. Leading India's independence movement. When Gandhi returned to India, he was shocked by the level of poverty and suffering caused by British colonialism. British rulers controlled India's wealth and resources, leaving millions of Indians impoverished. Gandhi knew that he could not stand by and let his people suffer. He began traveling across India, speaking with ordinary people and understanding their challenges. By the 1920s, Gandhi had become a prominent figure in the Indian National Congress, an organization working for India's independence. He encouraged Indians to unite and take a stand against British rule. However, he insisted on a nonviolent approach urging his followers to resist oppression through peaceful methods. The Salt March, a powerful symbol of resistance. One of Gandhi's most famous acts of protest was the Salt March in 1930. At the time, the British controlled the production and sale of salt in India, forcing Indians to pay a tax on this essential commodity. Gandhi saw this as an unjust law and he decided to challenge it. On March 12, 1930, Gandhi set out from his ashram, a spiritual community, with a group of followers. Over the course of 24 days, they marched 240 miles to the coastal town of Dandi. Thousands of people joined Gandhi along the way, inspired by his determination and commitment to justice. When they reached Dandi, Gandhi picked up a handful of salt from the beach, 
breaking the British salt laws in a simple but powerful act of defiance. The Salt March was a turning point in India's independence movement. It showed the world that ordinary people could stand up to injustice without violence. News of the march spread internationally, and it increased support for the Indian independence movement. Gandhi's peaceful resistance inspired millions and showed that nonviolence could be a powerful tool for social change. The struggle continues, imprisonment and protests. As Gandhi's popularity grew, so did the British government's attempts to suppress him. He was imprisoned multiple times for his protests, spending several years in jail. However, Gandhi remained committed to his principles, encouraging his followers to continue the struggle through nonviolence. During World War II, Gandhi launched the Quit India movement, calling for an immediate end to British rule. This was one of the largest civil disobedience movements in Indian history, with millions of Indians participating in protests, strikes, and boycotts. The British responded with mass arrests, and Gandhi, along with other leaders, was imprisoned again. Despite the hardships, Gandhi continued to preach peace and unity. He believed that India should gain independence, not through hatred or revenge, but through love and reconciliation. His message of nonviolence inspired people of all backgrounds and religions to come together for a common cause. India gains independence, a vision fulfilled. On August 15, 1947, India finally gained independence from British rule, marking the fulfillment of Gandhi's lifelong dream. However, the joy of freedom was marred by the tragedy of partition. India was divided into two separate countries, India and Pakistan. This division led to violent clashes between Hindus and Muslims, causing widespread suffering. Gandhi, deeply saddened by the violence, worked tirelessly to promote peace and harmony between communities. In his final years, Gandhi traveled across India, trying to heal the wounds caused by partition. Despite his efforts, communal tensions remained high, and Gandhi became a target of anger from some extremist groups. The Legacy of Mahatma Gandhi on January 30, 1948, Gandhi was assassinated by a Hindu extremist who opposed his efforts to promote peace between Hindus and Muslims. The world mourned the loss of a man who had devoted his life to fighting for justice and equality through nonviolence. Gandhi's death was a tragedy, but his message lived on. Today, Mahatma Gandhi is remembered as the father of the nation in India, and his philosophy of nonviolence has inspired countless leaders around the world, including Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson Mandela. His life teaches English learners about the power of determination, the importance of compassion, and the impact of peaceful resistance. For those learning English, Gandhi's story is a lesson in vocabulary, history, and humanity. His words and actions remind us that real strength comes not from violence but from patience, empathy, and an unwavering belief in truth. Cristiano Ronaldo, The Journey of a Champion Cristiano Ronaldo dos Santos Aveiro was born on February 5, 1985, in Funchal, Madeira, a small island off the coast of Portugal. Raised in a humble family, Ronaldo's early life was filled with financial struggles. His father worked as a municipal gardener, and his mother took various jobs to help make ends meet. Despite these challenges, young Ronaldo was filled with energy and a passion for football that set him apart. He would play on the streets and fields for hours, 
often using a ball made from rolled up socks if he couldn't get his hands on a real one. As a child, Ronaldo was not only driven but also determined to escape poverty. Even then, he dreamed of playing professionally and helping his family. At the age of 11, Ronaldo left his family and moved to Lisbon, where he joined Sporting CP's prestigious football academy. This was a huge sacrifice for him and his family. He was a young boy, alone in a big city, far from his loved ones, and surrounded by unfamiliar faces. Life in Lisbon wasn't easy. He struggled with homesickness, missed his family terribly, and faced criticism from peers due to his Maderon accent. But Ronaldo kept going, focusing on his dream with an intensity beyond his years. From skinny teenager to football superstar. In 2003, at the age of 18, Ronaldo's life changed dramatically. Sporting CP played a friendly match against Manchester United, where Ronaldo's skill and speed left a lasting impression on Sir Alex Ferguson, the legendary Manchester United manager. Ferguson was so impressed that he signed Ronaldo to Manchester United almost immediately. This was the beginning of Ronaldo's journey into the global spotlight, but it wasn't without challenges. When Ronaldo arrived at Manchester United, he was a skinny teenager stepping into a team of established players. Known for his fancy footwork and stylish tricks, Ronaldo initially faced criticism from his teammates and the British media, who questioned if he could perform consistently. But Ronaldo was determined to prove himself. He focused on building his strength, training harder than anyone else, and refining his game to become not just a flashy player but a dependable one. Under Ferguson's mentorship, Ronaldo transformed. He became known for his work ethic, often spending extra hours on the field, working on his shots, passes, and fitness. Within a few years, he became a crucial part of Manchester United, helping them win three English Premier League titles and a UEFA Champions League title. His dedication to self-improvement and success was evident. He wore the iconic number no. 7 jersey with pride, following in the footsteps of legends like George Best and David Beckham. The Real Madrid Era, Achieving Greatness in 2009, Ronaldo moved to Real Madrid in a record-breaking transfer of €94 million, Euros, the highest transfer fee at the time. Playing at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium was a dream come true, but it also came with immense pressure. The Spanish fans and media had high expectations, and Ronaldo knew he had to perform at his best. However, he did more than that, he thrived. At Real Madrid, Ronaldo became a football icon. His partnership with teammates like Karim Benzema and Marcelo led Real Madrid to numerous titles, including four UEFA Champions League titles. Over his nine years at Real Madrid, Ronaldo scored an astonishing 450 goals in 438 games, breaking records, and making history as the club's all-time leading scorer. But his success wasn't just about his skill, it was about his discipline and relentless drive to improve. One of Ronaldo's most remarkable traits is his commitment to physical fitness and training. Known for his rigorous daily routine, Ronaldo often arrives at training early and stays late, working on every aspect of his game. His dedication extends to his diet and sleep as well. He carefully monitors every detail of his lifestyle to ensure he stays in peak condition. His extraordinary commitment serves as a lesson for anyone striving for excellence. Would you agree that discipline and commitment are essential for success? 
Do you think Ronaldo would have reached this level of achievement without his intense work ethic? Challenges and Triumphs with the Portuguese National Team Ronaldo's career with the Portuguese national team has also been filled with highs and lows. Despite being one of the world's best players, he faced years of criticism for not winning a major tournament with his country. But in 2016, he silenced his critics when Portugal won the UEFA European Championship. During the final against France, Ronaldo suffered an injury and had to leave the field. But instead of sitting on the sidelines, he passionately cheered on his team, guiding and motivating them. His leadership and resilience inspired his teammates, and Portugal eventually claimed victory, marking the country's first major tournament win. This victory was one of the most emotional moments of Ronaldo's career. He later described it as a dream come true, as he had long wanted to bring a trophy to Portugal. For Ronaldo, the win wasn't just a personal triumph, but a moment of national pride. This experience showed that while he is an individual star, he values teamwork and has an enduring love for his country. An ever-evolving legend, from Juventus to Al Nasser. In 2018, Ronaldo took on a new challenge by joining Juventus in Italy's Serie A. Once again, he proved his adaptability and skill, helping Juventus win two Serie A titles. Ronaldo continued to break records and set new benchmarks, becoming one of the few players to succeed in multiple top European leagues. Even in the later stages of his career, Ronaldo's passion for football and his hunger for victory never faded. Currently playing for Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia, Ronaldo continues to inspire fans around the world. His journey from a poor boy in Madeira to one of the greatest footballers in history is a testament to what hard work, dedication, and resilience can achieve. Ronaldo's career serves as a reminder that greatness requires continuous effort and a willingness to overcome challenges, no matter how big. A global icon of inspiration. Cristiano Ronaldo's story resonates with millions not just because of his footballing skill but because of his determination, resilience, and desire to give back. He's known for his charitable contributions, supporting hospitals, and donating funds for causes like children's education and disaster relief. His actions off the field reflect his commitment to making a positive impact, showing fans that success is also about kindness and giving back. For English learners, Ronaldo's story offers lessons in resilience, self-discipline, and the importance of setting goals. His speeches, interviews, and dedication to his craft demonstrate that success is not achieved overnight. It's a long journey of self-belief, focus, and hard work. Ronaldo faced a lot of hardships early in his career. Do you think his difficult upbringing helped him become stronger? In today's world, how important do you think it is to stay disciplined and work hard, even when you face criticism? If you were in Ronaldo's position, what do you think would motivate you the most? Personal achievement, family, or something else? Let me know if you'd like another story or more about Cristiano Ronaldo's incredible life. Mother Teresa, a life of unwavering compassion and service. Mother Teresa, born Angie's Gonks Bojaxiu on August 26, 1910, in Skopje now in North Macedonia, grew up with a deep sense of faith and a natural inclination to help others. Raised in a devout Catholic family, she was taught from a young age about the importance of kindness, humility, and helping those less fortunate. Her father's sudden death when she was just eight years old left the family in financial hardship, but her mother's strength and generosity inspired her greatly. 
Despite their own struggles, Angie's mother always opened their home to those in need, sharing what little they had with the poor in their community. These early experiences planted the seeds of compassion in young Angie's and prepared her for a life of service. Answering the call, leaving home to serve. At 18, Angie's felt a calling to devote her life to God and to serve the poor. She left her family and joined the Sisters of Loreto, a religious order known for missionary work. She moved to Ireland to study English, a language she would later need to communicate with those she would serve in India. Soon after, she traveled to Kolkata, then Calcutta, India, where she began teaching at a girls' school. During this time, Kolkata was a city of stark contrasts. While there was wealth and beauty in some parts of the city, poverty and suffering were widespread. Many people lived in extreme conditions, struggling to find food, shelter, and medical care. Mother Teresa saw this suffering up close, and it weighed heavily on her heart. She realized that her work would extend far beyond the walls of her school. The Call Within a Call In 1946, on a train journey to the mountain town of Darjeeling, Mother Teresa felt what she described as a call within a call. She felt an overwhelming desire to leave her teaching position and dedicate herself to helping the poorest of the poor. For her, this was a life-altering moment. She believed that God wanted her to live among those suffering in the slums and to provide them with love, care, and dignity. She requested permission from her superiors to leave the convent and work independently. After some time, her request was granted, and she exchanged her traditional habit for a simple white sari with a blue border, an outfit that would later become a symbol of her mission. With no resources and no formal support, Mother Teresa began her mission on the streets of Kolkata, teaching children, comforting the sick, and providing basic care. She had no funding or resources, but her faith in her mission kept her going. Soon, people began to notice her work and donated supplies, allowing her to serve more people in need. Founding the Missionaries of Charity In 1950, Mother Teresa founded the Missionaries of Charity, a religious order dedicated to helping those society had forgotten, the homeless, the sick, the disabled, and the dying. The missionaries of charity grew rapidly, with more and more people joining to work alongside her. Centers were opened across India and eventually around the world, offering food, shelter, medical care, and companionship to people who had no one else to turn to. Mother Teresa's dedication to her work was unshakable. She didn't just care for people physically, she treated each person with respect and love, reminding them of their inherent worth. Her mission wasn't about just curing illnesses, it was about affirming dignity, love, and compassion for all. Imagine what it must have been like to work among people facing such immense suffering every day. How would you stay motivated in such challenging conditions? What would it take to keep going, day after day, despite the difficulties? Recognition and Criticism, Staying True to Her Mission As Mother Teresa's work gained global recognition, she became both celebrated and criticized. Many admired her for her selflessness, and she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979. During her acceptance speech, she emphasized the importance of small acts of love and compassion, saying, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. She donated her Nobel Prize money to support her mission, underscoring that her work was not about fame or wealth, but about serving those in need. 
However, Mother Teresa also faced criticism. Some argued that her centers provided limited medical care, and others questioned her approach to addressing poverty, suggesting that it focused more on providing immediate relief than on solving systemic issues. While these critiques were challenging, Mother Teresa remained focused on her mission to help those who had no one else. Do you think that when someone dedicates their life to helping others, they should be open to criticism? Or is it enough that they are doing good in the best way they know? It's a complex question, and one that people still debate today. A Legacy of Love and Compassion Mother Teresa's work continued until her health began to fail in the 1980s. She eventually stepped down as the leader of the Missionaries of Charity in 1997, the same year she passed away. Her funeral was attended by thousands, including dignitaries from around the world, a testament to the impact of her life's work. In 2016, she was canonized as St. Teresa of Calcutta by the Catholic Church. Her legacy lives on, as the missionaries of charity continue to serve people in over 130 countries, upholding her message of compassion and selfless service. Mother Teresa's story is a powerful reminder of how one person's dedication to a cause can make a difference in the world. She often said, if you can't feed a hundred people, then feed just one. Her words encourage us all to take small steps of kindness and to be compassionate to those around us. For English learners, Mother Teresa's life story provides valuable vocabulary related to humanitarian work and social justice. Her life also encourages us to think about how we treat others, especially those who are less fortunate. What do you think about Mother Teresa's mission? Could you see yourself doing something similar, or do you think it would be too challenging? Remember, her life teaches us that even the smallest act of kindness can make a big difference. What small acts of kindness could you add to your life today? Martin Luther King Jr., the dreamer who changed America. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929, in Atlanta, Georgia, into a world divided by race. Growing up as an African American in the South, he quickly became aware of the harsh realities of racial discrimination. Even as a young boy, he experienced segregation, the forced separation of black and white people in schools, transportation, restaurants, and other public places. He couldn't understand why people were treated differently simply because of their skin color. This painful early exposure to racism would shape King's commitment to justice and equality. A scholar and a preacher. King was an exceptionally bright student. He skipped two grades and entered Morehouse College, a prestigious black institution in Atlanta, at the young age of 15. He studied sociology and was deeply inspired by his father and grandfather, both Baptist ministers who encouraged him to use his voice for good. After college, King went on to study at Crozer Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania, where he learned about philosophy, theology, and the importance of nonviolent resistance. During his time at Crozer, King read the works of thinkers like Henry David Thoreau and Leo Tolstoy, who promoted peaceful protest as a way to bring about change. But one influence stood out above the rest, Mahatma Gandhi. King was inspired by Gandhi's success in using nonviolent resistance to free India from British rule. King believed that, just as Gandhi had fought for India's independence, African Americans could fight for freedom from racial injustice in the United States. After completing his studies, King married Coretta Scott, a talented singer and activist. Together, 
They moved to Montgomery, Alabama, where King became a pastor. He was only 26, but he was ready to lead and had a clear vision of what he wanted to achieve, a world where people of all races lived in harmony. The Montgomery Bus Boycott, a Turning Point In December 1955, an event in Montgomery would forever change the course of King's life. Rosa Parks, an African-American woman, was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a segregated bus to a white passenger. This injustice sparked outrage within the black community, and leaders quickly decided to organize a boycott of the city's buses. They wanted to show the world that African Americans would no longer tolerate unjust laws. King was chosen as the spokesperson for the Montgomery bus boycott, and he inspired people with his passionate speeches and unwavering commitment to nonviolence. The boycott lasted for 381 days, during which time African Americans walked, carpooled, or found other ways to get around. The financial pressure on the bus system grew, and finally, in 1956, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that bus segregation was unconstitutional. This victory was a turning point in the civil rights movement and cemented King's role as a national leader. The Fight for Civil Rights After the success of the Montgomery bus boycott, King continued his mission to end segregation and promote equality. He co-founded the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, an organization that worked to advance civil rights across the South. King traveled from city to city, organizing peaceful protests, giving speeches, and encouraging others to join the movement. But the fight for civil rights was not easy. King and his followers were often met with violent opposition. Police used dogs, tear gas, and fire hoses to break up demonstrations, and many protesters were arrested, beaten, or even killed. King himself was arrested numerous times, yet he never lost hope. He believed that if people stood together peacefully, they could change unjust laws and attitudes. One of the most dangerous protests King led was in Birmingham, Alabama, in 1963. The city was one of the most segregated in the country, and black citizens were denied basic rights. King and his supporters organized marches, sit-ins, and other nonviolent protests to draw attention to the injustice. The Birmingham police responded brutally, but the protesters continued to march, drawing national attention to the issue. Eventually, the Birmingham campaign helped lead to the desegregation of the city. The March on Washington and I Have a Dream In August 1963, King helped organize one of the largest political gatherings in American history, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. More than 250,000 people gathered at the Lincoln Memorial to demand equal rights for African Americans and economic opportunities for all. It was here that King delivered his most famous speech, I Have a Dream. In this speech, King spoke of his vision for a better future, one where people would not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. His words echoed across the world and inspired millions. The I Have a Dream speech became a powerful symbol of the civil rights movement and helped rally support for racial equality. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Nobel Peace Prize. King's efforts were beginning to make a difference, and the government took notice. In 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act into law, which banned discrimination based on race, color, religion, or national origin in public places and employment. This was a historic victory for the civil rights movement, 
and King's role in achieving it was undeniable. Later that year, King was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his dedication to nonviolence and social justice. At just 35 years old, he became the youngest person to receive this honor. King used the prize money to fund further civil rights initiatives, and he continued to travel, speak, and protest for the rights of African Americans. Challenges and Tragic End Despite his successes, King faced growing challenges in his later years. The civil rights movement had helped to pass new laws, but racism and poverty persisted. King began to focus on issues of economic justice, speaking out against poverty, war, and inequality across the United States. In April 1968, King traveled to Memphis, Tennessee, to support sanitation workers who were striking for better wages and working conditions. On April 4, as he stood on the balcony of his hotel room, he was assassinated by a gunman. King's death shocked the nation, and people mourned the loss of a leader who had inspired hope, courage, and a vision of a better future. Legacy and Lessons for English Learners Martin Luther King Jr. left behind a powerful legacy. His life and message remind us that change is possible, even in the face of great obstacles. King's story teaches us about resilience, empathy, and the importance of standing up for justice. For English learners, his speeches and writings offer a chance to learn not only vocabulary and grammar but also about one of history's greatest struggles for freedom. King's words encourage us all to imagine a world where everyone is treated fairly and with respect, regardless of their background. Winston Churchill, the resilient leader of World War II. Winston Churchill, one of the most iconic leaders of the 20th century, was born on November 30, 1874, in Oxfordshire, England, to an aristocratic family. His father, Lord Randolph Churchill, was a prominent British politician, while his mother, Jenny Jerome, was an American socialite. Despite this privileged background, Churchill's life was not as easy as one might expect. His early years were filled with challenges, setbacks, and a restless drive to prove himself. A Troubled Childhood and Early Schooling As a child, Churchill was not an academic star. He struggled in school, and his independent and rebellious nature often led him to clash with teachers. He was sent to a boarding school where his performance was far from exemplary. However, despite his academic difficulties, Churchill had a fierce curiosity and a love for reading. He devoured history books and tales of war, fascinated by stories of great leaders and military campaigns. Little did he know that he would one day become one of those leaders, facing challenges on an unprecedented scale. This makes us wonder, can traditional schooling always capture a person's true potential? Churchill's experience suggests that sometimes, talents lie outside conventional education paths. Military Career and Adventure After struggling through his early education, Churchill eventually found his way to the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, where he trained to become an officer in the British Army. The military gave him structure and a sense of purpose, and he excelled in his training. Soon, he was deployed as a young officer, and his career took him to places like India, Sudan, and South Africa. Churchill was not only a brave soldier but also a budding writer. He documented his experiences as a war correspondent, and his writings gave him a taste of fame in Britain. During the Boer War in South Africa, 
Churchill was taken prisoner by enemy forces. In a daring escape, he managed to flee captivity and travel over 300 miles to safety. This escapade captured the public's imagination and made him a national hero. Churchill's courage, resilience, and resourcefulness shone through. It was this same determination that would later help him rally an entire nation during World War II. The Start of a Political Career Building on his military fame, Churchill entered politics in 1900, winning a seat in the House of Commons. Over the next few decades, he held various government positions, including First Lord of the Admiralty, where he played a key role in modernizing the British Navy. But Churchill was a complex character, outspoken, bold, and sometimes controversial. He wasn't afraid to challenge the status quo, and his opinions often made him enemies in the political arena. One of Churchill's most challenging moments in politics came during World War I. He played a significant role in planning the Gallipoli Campaign, a military operation that ultimately failed and led to heavy casualties. The failure of Gallipoli was a devastating blow, and Churchill faced intense criticism. He resigned from his government post and briefly left politics, feeling as though he had failed. But Churchill's story shows that resilience means facing failure and learning from it. He didn't give up. Instead, he used the experience to grow and return to politics with a stronger resolve. The Dark Clouds of World War II In the 1930s, as Adolf Hitler rose to power in Germany, Churchill grew increasingly concerned about the threat posed by the Nazis. However, many political leaders in Britain preferred a policy of appeasement, hoping to avoid conflict by making concessions to Germany. Churchill, on the other hand, was outspoken about the dangers of this approach. He warned that Hitler's ambitions could not be contained by negotiations alone. His warnings were largely ignored, and he became somewhat of an outsider in British politics. But Churchill's persistence in the face of skepticism paid off when, in 1939, World War II broke out. Britain soon found itself under severe threat, and Churchill's clear-sighted vision made him the ideal candidate to lead the nation through its darkest hour. In May 1940, he was appointed Prime Minister, taking on the role of wartime leader at a critical time in history. Can you imagine what it would feel like to take on such a massive responsibility during a time of war? What qualities do you think are needed to stay calm and focused under such pressure? Rallying a Nation, the Power of Words As Prime Minister, Churchill faced immense challenges. German forces were advancing across Europe, and Britain was one of the last countries standing against Hitler's regime. The country faced relentless air raids and bombings, with major cities like London suffering significant destruction. People were losing homes, loved ones, and their sense of safety. Morale was low and fear was high. In this desperate time, Churchill's speeches became a powerful source of strength. He addressed the British people directly, using words to ignite a spirit of resilience and courage. His speeches were passionate, defiant, and full of conviction. In one of his most famous speeches, he declared, We shall fight on the beaches, we shall never surrender. These words lifted the nation's spirits and reminded them that they were fighting for freedom and justice. Churchill's speeches also reached beyond Britain, inspiring allies around the world. 
Even the United States, which was initially reluctant to enter the war, was moved by Churchill's appeals. Eventually, the U.S. joined the Allied forces, and together, they turned the tide of the war. Can words alone inspire people to be brave? What would you say to someone who needed encouragement during a difficult time? The End of the War and Churchill's Legacy After years of battle, the Allied forces achieved victory in 1945, ending the war in Europe. Churchill had been a key figure in leading Britain and inspiring the world to resist oppression. His unwavering resolve and leadership had made a profound impact on the course of history. Despite his achievements, Churchill faced a surprising turn of events. Shortly after the war, he lost the position of prime minister in the 1945 election. Many were shocked, but Churchill himself accepted the loss with dignity. He believed he had served his purpose during the war and he respected the democratic process. In 1951, he returned as prime minister for a second term, serving until 1955. He continued to be a prominent voice in British politics and global affairs, and in 1953, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature for his writings and speeches, which have since become classics in the art of rhetoric. A Lasting Legacy of Courage and Resilience Winston Churchill's legacy is complex but powerful. His life reminds us of the strength of determination, the power of words, and the importance of resilience in the face of adversity. While he faced criticism for some of his policies, his role in defending freedom and rallying people during World War II remains deeply admired. Churchill's speeches offer valuable lessons for English learners, as they showcase the use of powerful language, emotion, and persuasion. His story is also a reminder that true leadership often means standing firm even when others doubt you. What part of Churchill's story inspires you the most? Do you believe that we can all make a difference, even if we're not in positions of great power? How can we use resilience in our own lives, just as Churchill did during his?